The company Rocket Lab is looking to build the country's first launch facility in Canterbury. This is brilliant. It has identified a remote paddock near Birdlings Flat as its preferred launch site for a rocket that can carry a satellite into orbit. With me now is Rocket Lab founder and CEO Peter Beck. Peter, good morning to you. Good morning, Paul. Congratulations. As you know, let's, let's, let's tackle the elephant in the room firstly, shall we? The last <laughs> time we spoke, I bet you $20 that you would you never indeed. launch a rocket. I have $20 in my hand, and I will very, very reluctantly send this to you. <laughs> That's fantastic. Hey, Paul, do you want to go double or nothing onto orbit? Double or nothing onto orbit, great. Anything that delays having to pay your money, I will do. So uh, we better explain this. So double or nothing means we've got a $40 bet now. You're still up for 20, but I'm up for 40, double or nothing. Um, yep. That yep. you will not be able to launch a rocket into orbit. Correct. All right. When do you hope to do that? Um, look, we're trying to get to our first test flight underway by the end of the year. Um, so we're working really hard to, to achieve that. You know, how important to your success is having a committed launch site? Is this site in Canterbury? Oh, look, it's ab absolutely critical. I mean, you know, when we started this project, we, uh, we, we went over to America and we went to all the launch ranges in America. And, uh, you know, it was clear that there's just no way that we could uh, deliver, you know, on our goals by launching out of America. So we had to find uh, uh, somewhere on the planet that um, was a, a small island nation in the middle of nowhere um, that had desolate air traffic and mm -hmm. marine and shipping. It was uh, friendly, stable government and all those kinds of things. And uh, there's really only one country in the planet that, uh, that met all our requirements, and that was New Zealand. Fantastic. What's standing in your way, do you think? Do you know of anything that's actually standing in your way? Um, well, I mean, it's it is it is rocket science, Paul. There is uh, there's it's it's kind of tricky. Space is hard. Um, technically, we're in we're in really good shape. I mean, the the Rutherford engine's running really well, and and the vehicle is coming together very nicely. Um, you know, we have to launch under an FAA license, so there's a huge licensing process that we go through, and also, you know, we have to uh, have to build the launch site, so there's a resource and consent process that we have to go through as well. But um, what are your understandings? I mean, good. you've identified this particular site. Um, what are your understandings mm. around the likelihood that you're going to get the OK to use it? Well, look, we, we've started the process, and uh, you know, this is this is this is us coming out and declaring our intentions that we think it's a great site. I mean, the site's been used for rocket launching since uh, the 1960s. Yep. And yeah, but you so want to you want to launch one rocket a week. <laughs> Not, not from that site. I mean, that's from multiple sites around okay. the country. Out of Birdlings Flat, uh, once a month would be the maximum we would look out of that All site. right. Now, I heard the Greens, and what you don't want is commentary from the Greens on this, but obviously someone went to the Greens, <laughs> and they are very yep. worried about a particular native lizard. Well, it's a little bit ironic, really, given, um, you know, the Greens are using Cape Canaveral as an example, but, uh, of course, we're not building Cape Canaveral. But Cape Canaveral is, ironically, one of the, one of the, uh, the most thriving and, uh, and, and robust wildlife parks and refuges in America. So uh, the two activities coexist very nicely. We're, that very nicely said, so that knocks on the head any kind of arguments the Greens can possibly have, um, thank God. Um, where does this place us internationally? If you're up and running, you've got a site in Canterbury, where does this place us internationally in terms of the space race? Well, I mean, there's, there's only been 10 other nations uh, that have ever put their own satellite into orbit, um, and most of those nations are superpowers. So, uh, you know, it's a significant achievement for, for New Zealand, and Rocket Lab will be the second uh, private company uh, in the world ever to have, have done that as well when we, when we, when we finally achieve it. So. Um, it's 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 a big deal, and when when we're launching at the flight rate we are, we are, you know we want to, um, New Zealand will be launching more satellites to orbit than any other nation on the planet. Brilliant, brilliant, Peter. I wish you all the very best. We're going to follow this with a lot of interest. As in, incidentally, I always have because I didn't see the twenty dollar bet against you ever launching a rocket as being uh, curmudgeonly. I believe <laughs> I'm actually the wind beneath your wings. I think that what I was doing was further inspiring you and giving you the momentum to achieve what you've achieved. Absolutely, Paul. I have not forgotten that all this time. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. You take care. And again, congratulations, you mate. You've done, you've done great work so far. Um, that's Peter Beck there. Thanks, Paul. Um, and, you know, this is state-of-the-art stuff. As I said before, this is the cutting edge of the knowledge wave. Anyone stands in their way and they'll have me to answer for. Founder and CEO of Rocket Lab, Peter Beck.